The golden section root rectangles are just the square roots of their numbers. For example, the square root of 3 is 1.732. So the proportions of a root 3 would be 1 on the short side to 1.732 on the long side. A couple of these have interesting properties, and here's how you make them manually. Starting, of course, with a square, which is a root 1. If you take a square's diagonal and drop it down, you have a root 2. Take that, drop it down, a root 3, and so on. There's three ways to find the golden section of these rectangles, but really that goes for any rectangle. And the best way to think of the golden section, or divine proportion, or dynamic symmetry, is to take the woo out of it. Just get rid of all the nonsense, and just think of it as a reciprocal. That's what it really is. And that's the first way you can find it in any design program that supports layers. You're just making a copy of the original and placing it within itself on the short side. And now you have the rectangle's first reciprocal, or the golden section. And you can keep on breaking it down that way, which allows you to divide any rectangle based on unity, or the original proportions. For the second example, I'm going to use a root 4 because the square root of 4 is 2. Therefore, a root 4 is two squares side by side. Which makes it easier to find the golden section mathematically because you're looking for the reciprocal, which is dividing the long side into the short side. Let's say the long side is 9 inches and the short side is 4.5. You just divide 9 by 4.5 and you get 2. Then you take whatever the measurement is on the short side, you divide it by what you just found, and that's where the reciprocal falls into the long side. And the third way is manually, so here I'm going to use a root 5. And again, this works for any rectangle of any dimension. You simply find the right angle of any corner to the primary diagonal, and where that intersects the edge, that is the golden section. So that's 3, 4, 5, but on a root 2, the golden section is actually in the center, and drawing it manually gives you the armature of the rectangle, which is how you find thirds of any rectangle in any dimension. And that leaves us with a square or the root 1. It generates its own rectangles like the whirling square or the 1.5. Using it within rectangles is actually my favorite way to design, and it's what I do best. So how relevant are all of these in today's media landscape? Well, the 1.5 I just mentioned certainly is because it's the dimensions of a 35mm full frame, and we work on that all the time. And the root 3 is because it's basically the dimensions of a UHD rectangle or an HD rectangle. You're talking 1.732 versus 1.77. That's so close. But because I'm such a geek with this, I'll always default for precision to the UHD over the root 3. And these two formats alone cover most stills and most of YouTube. And then there's IMAX at 1.43, insanely close to a root 2 at 1.41. Also on the short side, early cinema and television, 1 to 1.33. This is a contemporary example, but that's a real old school cubist and impressionist era ratio that's getting into compound grid territory, in this case overlapping threes. So interesting to me in how what's so old becomes new again over time. Which leaves us with the movie industry's wide formats and all their variations. But really, there's so much going on here, that's an episode by itself.